Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another breakdown of Saints training camp. Day 15, a little bit different. We had an evening practice, and, you know, look, it's late, but we got work to do, so we're going to dive into it very shortly. But before we do, just want to give a shout-out to Justin Burgess at Ben Pro for sponsoring today's show. Again, if you have a business that's in the greater New Orleans region and you need help with employee benefits or health insurance, give Justin a call, 504 888 8038. He's going to take great care of you and tell him that John Hendricks sent you. Thanks again to Justin Burgess for sponsoring today's show. Day 15, like I said, it was a little bit different. So 4 p.m. practice or 4.30 is when we were able to get out there to about 6.15. Runs a little bit later because of the interviews and stuff afterwards. And so it was a late night work on the recap and all the such and all that and such. But you know, look, this is part of the territory. This is what we do and what we signed up for. So, look, I think the first point we'll hit on, talk about injuries and talk about attendance. So the first big thing was Demario Davis was back. You know, he's been dealing with that calf injury. So he was back at practice. And so let's just obviously say that he's back at practice. He was in there for stretch, did not participate in seven on seven or team drills or anything. Look, the Saints are going to be cautious here like they are with all their injured players that come back. They're going to basically just, hey, let's let's ease them into action. Let's get them back in the flow of things. And so I don't know if we'll see too much of Demario Davis when it comes to joint practices with the Chargers. So that's something to pay attention to. But he was back. That was good. Also saw Lucas Kroll doing some work uh, with the trainer. That's encouraging, too. He's a guy that really needs to get back up to speed. Got hurt on a really crazy play inside uh, a, a few days ago. And so – those things may suck, but, you know, hopefully he can come back sooner rather than later. And, of course, we got a real positive update. I saw Kendra Miller at the beginning of stretch, and then he came out later to observe practice uh, as, as kind of an innocent bystander. But, you know, look, he got better news on his niece. It's a knee sprain. Minor, they got better news. He's going to make the travel or he's going to travel with the team up to California. So good news there. So uh, those who weren't there, same casting characters except for two wrinkles michael thomas cam jordan weren't there veteran rest days you know dennis allen said he got a full game of work in it's been a little bit since he's had that so he gave him extra veteran day off for recovery and such but you know trey Quan smith still dealing with the groin rashid shaheed still dealing with the groin uh, kirk merritt hamstring landon young again we we heard it was a sprained mcl still waiting on confirmation for all that and see what his Prognosis is Andres Pete with quad, Jesse James also groin, Kroll with the tailbone, and then, you know, we had uh, Cam Jordan. So as far as practice goes, I mean, real interesting. We didn't see any of Jake Hayner today. It was all Derek Carr and Jameis Winston, and so we saw them at seven on sevens, and so they ended up like rotating play or rotating series, and so like you had Carr do his. Then Winston came in and he had Carr do his and then Winston came in and such. And so we had that a little bit, but, you know, that was kind of the flow of it. I, I thought seven on sevens, they later moved over to the red zone and such. Um, some real big highlights there, I think, that we see in there. I think Jawan Johnson is a guy that continues to impress. I really loved what I saw from him in the Chiefs game, which we didn't really even talk about on this. But, you know, look, this is training camp. We'll kind of stick to that. But, you know, I thought I was really encouraged with the game. I saw everything I needed to see from the starters. I really don't need to see them again. Interesting, interestingly enough, Dennis Allen was asked if we're going to see Derek Carr against the Chargers. He said, we'll see. I'm inclined to think that he's not going to play on Sunday. Don't quote me on that. But I think that the joint practices with the Chargers are going to hold a little bit more weight there just to be able to get some of that experience. I'd be pretty surprised if they do play, but we will see because I think we got all the answers we need from the first team offense and defense. There's really no reason to, to roll them out there in my opinion, but again, I'm not the head coach of New Orleans Saints. We'll see how that kind of rolls out, but uh, sevens, you know, look, um, I, I thought that you had a, a couple of good things uh, out there. Uh, really the highlights were in team. And so a couple team sessions where they were able to go from, Basically on the opposite side of the 50, and then they moved into the red zone action. Um, you know, defense was was holding tough in seven on sevens, and in the early part of team drills only gave up what, one touchdown. I think that was Kawan Baker um, on one of the routes from Jameis, if I'm not mistaken. And he actually had a keeper inside for a touchdown as well. And so, 
look, I mean, you see some of these things that, that transpire through this and, um, you know, it's good to see some of that type of stuff. And actually, I think Kwan's was a seven on seven, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, it was seven on seven. So don't go back or let me back up. It was from the seven yard line. He had a, a nice little route against Marshall on Lattimore and seven on sevens, made it a nice little juke at the one and got in from Winston. So that was a good highlight from seven on sevens. And as far as team goes, again, a few things pop. I thought that Carl Granderson continues to improve. He continues to show up. His pass rush is great. I know he didn't really do too much against the Chiefs, but he's been doing it in practice. I think it's just a matter of time before we do see a lot of that click and kind of come through on a, a different level. You know, Nathan Shepard showing up. Brian Brisset, I thought he had a really good rep in getting off the ball and getting into the backfield to try to blow up and, and get pressure on Carr and such. Um, I think those things are coming, right? And so I, I'm, I'm excited about this defensive line. My question mark is is the linebacker spot and the offensive line. Talked about it on here. Linebacker, I think they have some unsung heroes. I, Jalen Smith was very active today. You know, we talked to him after practice. He's very excited to be here, obviously. You know, just uh, another stop because he was with Dallas and then you had uh, Green Bay, New York and such. So, I mean, it was a little bit different for him uh, as where his, his career trajectory has gone and such. But, look, I think for him – it's it's one of those things where he was getting a lot of work with Pete Warner, you know, working alongside with him uh, as far as it goes with, you know, nickel coverage and such. So I thought that it was really interesting to see Jalen Smith do a lot of work here and there. And, and look, he was pretty active. And so I think he's learning. He said it's a familiar, familiar system. It's the first time he's worked with a defensive head coach. He's most everybody that he's with or everybody else that he's been with is offensive minded. So maybe he's somebody that can make a push and try to make a case for the roster. Worst case, maybe he's a practice squad guy, but again, other teams are going to be interested. We'll see how that kind of plays out, but really the highlights of the day came in two minutes. And so just kind of set the scene for you is the offense was working uh, at one 30 on the clock, two timeouts. They had it on their own 35. They needed a touchdown to get in. And so what's interesting is both Jameis Winston and Derek Carr led touchdown drives and they got them in the last 10, 15 seconds. And it was just nice because they converted both, both of them converted a fourth down to be able to extend the drive in the series. So I thought that was nice. Um, You know, going on cars drive, look, you know, he had a, a couple of good passes. One, uh, you know, it was a, a seam route up to Juwan Johnson for a big gain that kind of flipped the field, if you will. And so, then you had Alvin Kamara get back-to-back -back touches and such. I thought that was really good on him. Uh, you know, Chris Olave, again, didn't really do much in the first game, which is fine because, I mean, think about this offense. He didn't really – he didn't touch the ball. He got the first target, but they still were able to beat him with Jawan Johnson, Michael Thomas, Kamara, and running football. I mean, this is what we hope for, right? And Kirkwood gets the, the reward at the end with the touchdown. But, you know, as far as it goes – he made a really cool catch off the sideline working against Alante Taylor with ball was a little bit low, but he was able to get it and kind of scoop it underneath to get the cut the, the catch. Um, and then as far as touchdown, I was seven seconds left. They were from the nine yard line. He finds Juwan Johnson in the back of the end zone, Lattimore and Matthew were the closest that were there. Uh, and so that was a big moment because, you know, sticking with the play, you get Johnson for the touchdown. Now, they did put Blake Groupie in there for the extra point. And so he made that and he actually hit all six of his kicks. Two were extra points, four were actually field goals. And from that 35 to 44 yard range. Uh, but then one of the things Rizzy, Darren Rizzy came in as special teams coach and simulated a penalty on the defense, which would move the two point conversion from the two to the one, you know, it's, it's half the distance to goal. So it puts it to one. So they rolled out the offense to do a two point in both series. Now groupie didn't kick in the second one when Jameis had it, but uh, you know, they get the two point conversion Alvin Kamara inside for a touchdown run and they win that series. And then Jameis comes, you know, his series was pretty good. Um, his big hookup again, he converted a fourth, fourth down play, a short little pass to Ellis Merriweather, who had a, a pretty good preseason game. I'm really interested to see more of him, um, possibly a late comer. Again, probably practice squad more than anything, unless 
something crazy, you know, happens. I, again, I think we have to pay attention to what happens to Kirk Merritt, but you know, don't say never say never, but his big play was when they were on a 42 yard line of the defense, he had a 23 yard hookup to Jimmy Graham up the seam, uh, perfectly thrown ball, perfect catch from Jimmy, you know, Zach Bond tried to stick his hand out to try to get one on it. It was right there in front of Jonathan Abram. Uh, so that was a big Jimmy moment, if you will. And so that was something we're waiting to see. I know he got that one catch in the chiefs game and everybody just erupted, but you know, look, it was, uh, interesting just sequence of events. And I really love that hookup, uh, from Jameis. And then as far as the, the play that went in the play of the day, if you will, they were from the third and 10 from the 19 yard line. So they had a, a, a spike after that. Then they tried a back shoulder to Adam Prentice, who had a couple of targets today, just couldn't get him in. But he had a, a, a touchdown to the post with Shaq Davis from 19 yards out. Look, this was an insane catch. Not as good as what we saw from Keith Kirkwood the other day, but back of the end zone, goes up for it one-handed, comes down. I, I, I can't – I don't know how he stayed in bounds, I, but they gave it to him. And it was a big moment for him. Shaq Davis is a guy that I think has ascended a little bit. You saw this team release James Washington in favor of Daryl Williams. Uh, look, I, I think Washington is a guy that just, you know, didn't really – I thought he was ahead a little bit in some aspects, but I've been telling you guys that it's been Keith Kirkwood, Traquan Smith is the guys, and then A.T. Perry having a really good game. But Washington was – did a few things here and there. I thought Brian Edwards had a really good week of practice, did a little bit of you know, things in the Chiefs game. But, um, you know, Washington just Washington just never really got opportunities, chances, I guess, in a way to, to really showcase what he's about. And, you know, this is the NFL. And so those things happen for a veteran like him. Hopefully he lands on his feet. But Shaq Davis, big moment. Again, guy that I think can end up on the practice squad here. Um, but that was a really good hookup. And I wish we had video, but we don't. And then on the two-point conversion for Winston, he found Foster Moreau in the back or in the left end zone uh, over Jonathan Abram, and so he gets a two-point conversion. So those are things you like to see. Defense had the first first uh, part of it; they they won that, but offense had the last laugh. So those are things you love to see. Uh, again, we're really excited. You know, we'll take off on Wednesday tomorrow for LA or. Well, I'm going to be in Orange County because they're, the facility is in Costa Mesa. The game's in L.A. at SoFi. So we'll be out there, me and Ross Jackson. We're going to give you all the coverage from joint practices, which are going to be on Thursday and Friday. So tomorrow is going to be the travel day for everybody. Thursday starts joint practices. Uh, I believe it's 9 to 11 in their time. So adjust accordingly. We'll be there with reactions, interviews, all the nine yards, and then I'll be out there for the game on Sunday, So, which is actually going to be nationally televised. I say nationally. It's going to be available on NFL Network. Put it that way. Last week's was available on NFL Network uh, when they uh, suited up against the Chiefs. This one's going to be on NFL Network. The game against the Texans, the finale, is going to be a nationally televised broadcast on Fox. So really exciting news. Again, thanks to Justin Burgess for producing today's show and sponsoring today's show. I really appreciate all you guys' support. Thank you so much. We will talk at you in California. Have a good one and be good people.